All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. This video is not starting in the place I wanted it to start. It's a little dark outside. And that's because the uh, video I filmed in front of the 55 gallon tank you're about to see got all messed up. Um, the audio is ruined. So here we are refilming this part of the video. Do not worry, it's gonna make sense. Basically, a quick background for today's video is that I bought a Blackmore goldfish, attempted to keep him with some other fish, and it didn't go over so well. Here he was in the 55 gallon tank, and while he wasn't actively being picked on, you can still see there's a little bit of rip fins. Luckily, I did have a backup plan, and that's where this video starts to come into play. So right now, we're gonna take a look at my 55 gallon community aquarium. Now, this is where I originally tried to put the Blackmore goldfish, and it went really well for the first couple days until one of the tiger barbs in here started to get a little nippy. Now, this tank is an overall community tank. It's a grow out tank for some koi, and everyone in here really gets along. There's a large parrot cichlid, there's little tetras, there's a huge feather fin catfish, but everyone really, really gets along. Unfortunately, that was not the case for this Blackmore goldfish. Some of the fish started to nip at him, some started to chase him, you know, it wasn't too great. So obviously I caught it in time. I put him in this little separation box you see up in the corner, um, and I kept him safe so he could heal. Now after a few days of healing, he was doing so much better. About a week later, he was all good to go. And that leads us up to this point where it's time for him to get a more permanent home because obviously he cannot live in this little net box thing for too much longer. Now I was gonna move him into my 36 gallon tank. In fact, I did and the same thing happened. Some fish started nipping at him. It wasn't a suitable home for him. Obviously he can't go in the turtle tank. He can't go in the 15 gallon community tank, too small. He can't go in the seven gallon patio pond bowl, too small. And he obviously can't go in the saltwater tanks. Which brings us to this video of moving him into my 1000 gallon koi pond. Now I've actually had fancy goldfish in there in the past and they've done really well. Um, unfortunately, they didn't do too well after I took them out of the koi pond. That's when I lost all my fancy goldfish. Anyways, that's a long story. But today we're gonna to be taking my little baby one-eyed Blackmore goldfish and acclimating him into my koi pond with my huge like two feet koi. Luckily, koi and goldfish are super peaceful together. And as I mentioned, I've done this before with no issues in the past. The Blackmore goldfish is bigger than what the biggest koi can eat, fortunately. So we won't have to worry about them eating each other, thank God, as I do keep these koi with a whole bunch of small minnows and it's really no issue. Um, as for food, the pond is full of natural food sources there's bugs in there there's tons of algae so this goldfish will have tons of space to you know forage around for food which he does all the time in the little breeder box net he's currently in I drop the pellets down and he just goes crazy and digs through all the plants that are in there but without further ado let's throw you back to some footage today where we checked out the koi pond and got it all nice and ready for our new little goldfish to join the koi pond family now the koi pond today is looking pretty good for the most part it's a little dirty I'm not gonna lie uh, the fish are all happy the Flowers, or the lilies, I should say, are blooming. There actually is a little flower right there. However, we have an algae problem. Actually, it's looking not that bad. The pond water is crystal clear, but we do just need to clean up some of the small things. As you can see, the ducks knocked a rock in. I will go ahead and grab that out. Floating plants are doing good. Need to clean that skimmer. But before we do that, I think it's time we do a little update and check in on the ducks. So here are the two ducks. If you're new here, these are my two ducks, peanut and butter. Um, they're not very nice ducks, as you can see. They're pretty mean, honestly. But we still love them anyways. Uh, they live in this whole backyard section of this coop. Well, they live in the coop whenever they want, really. They go in here every once in a while. They have their food in there, their water in there, their eggshells in there. And then they have a pool right back there they swim in because ducks absolutely love the water. Um, I let them out every once in a while when they decide to be nice. However, unfortunately, they don't like to be nice very often. They are doing really good despite being extremely rude and they're just living their best lives back here. Back to the koi pond though, we need to start by getting this filter cleaned. This gets so dirty so fast. It's so suctioned in there, I can barely get it out. As you can see, that's just gross. A few moments later. Okay, we've got the pond filling. As you can see, we got the skimmer basket cleaned. We'll go ahead and dump that right back in. But now we have to clean the main filter way back there. Luckily, it's really not that difficult. We just unscrew this like so. And then we're going to turn this to the backwash setting. Water starts coming out, as you can obviously see. Then we just pump this handle a few times and all the nasty water comes right out. So I'll spare you this boring part and we'll get back to the pond in a second. A few moments later. And just like that, the koi pond is all put back together, is clean for the most part and is ready for our new fancy goldfish to join some of these much larger koi and these baby little minnows. So without further ado, we're gonna go run inside, 
grab the fish and come right back out here. In this net, we have my baby Blackmore goldfish, but something special about this goldfish is he actually only has one eye. I have no idea where the other eye went. Um, it's just not there, to be quite honest with you. There, you can see him a little bit better. There's just, there's just no eye. So I put him in here so I can monitor him, make sure he's eating, you know, stuff like that. And he's been doing really, really well in here. And I thought it's time to get him out of this little small box and get him into a more permanent home. Two hours later. It's been a little bit, as you can see, it's got dark. But here we are with our Blackmore goldfish, ready to go into our koi pond. The koi pond at night, I have to say, looks a lot better than the koi pond during the day. Um, it truly looks good at night with the lights. As you can see, we have three little Awazi lights in here, and they do a great job of lighting up the koi pond. However, this pond is ready to get its newest member. Um, hopefully the other fish don't try to eat them. They look pretty hungry. They literally already ate today, but okay. Um, so I'm just going to be setting this guy in this pitcher to acclimate. Hopefully he doesn't escape. Um, we're just gonna have to see though. Luckily because it is so warm outside the temperature of his water and the temperature of the pond water is nearly identical But I'm just gonna let him float just like that for about 10 minutes before we release him into the koi pond While he does this thing though, you can see the koi pond looks a lot cleaner and a lot nicer than it did um, It really does clean up nice, which we love to see But anyways, I will check back in just a few minutes with our Blackmore goldfish Hopefully ready to go into this new 1,000 gallon home one eternity later just like that, it has been about 10 minutes. Uh, as you can see, he's made his way floating over to these lily pads, but we're just gonna pop him right on out. There's a better look at him. There's only one eye. Well, maybe you can see it from the top down better, but yeah, there's only one eye, it's crazy. And as you can see right there, he has only one eye. And the eye that he does have, well, it looks like a blueberry. But I'm just gonna take this guy and slowly release him into this pond. He is black, so he will blend in very easily. Luckily, there is so much food in here. He will have no issues foraging for food, which is nice, and I don't even know where he went. Like I said, he blends in so well. Well, he swam under the lily pad. He's right on this side, which is nice because you can kind of see him. Of course, he's right out of the shade. Now that I think of it, maybe adding such a dark fish into a dark pond wasn't such a good idea because I don't know where he went. Oh, okay, I found him. He's right there. He's doing good. And that is going to be a wrap for the koi pond. I know you guys haven't seen the koi pond or the ducks in a while, so I thought I would go ahead and just show you guys everything today, as well as, of course, introducing our new little member into the pond family. Regardless of wherever he is, though, I know he will like this koi pond a lot better than that tiny net he was in. I felt so bad keeping him in there for so long, but he just had to recover long enough to be able to live happily and healthily in this 1,000 gallon pond. We obviously didn't want him getting sucked into the filter while he wasn't doing so hot. Luckily, he has made a full recovery and was doing amazing. But that is gonna be just about it for this week's video. Um, if you guys want to see more of these outdoor pond videos as it warms up, let me know in the comments down below. I will go ahead and follow whatever lead you guys like the most. I will catch you guys in the next video. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and good.